Welcome to Now on Android, your ongoing guide to what's new and notable in the world of Android development. This week, we'll be covering the top mad things at I.O., designing for Wear OS, interaction source, view composition and navigation animation in Jetpack Compose, StudioBot, game development, and more. Continuing our I.O. coverage, we released a short video and blog detailing the top three things to know from modern Android development at Google I.O. 2023, the preview of StudioBot for U.S.-based developers in the Canary release of Android Studio Hedgehog, Jetpack Compose updates such as flow layout improvements, performance improvements in the modifier system, new material components, the Glance Library beta, and Compose for TV, Kotlin updates, including our recommendation to use Kotlin for build scripts and version catalogs, and our collaboration with JetBrains on the new K2 compiler. Check out the blog and video for more detail. Our UX research and design team released a series of videos to help with the challenges of designing and building watch experiences that work for everyone. They cover how best to design for your target audience, how to make the most of the watch form factor with a series of design principles, and introduce how to approach product inclusion throughout the development lifecycle. We had three interesting alphas show up on our Jetpack library since the last episode. First of all, Autofill 1.3 added Autofill Hint constants for things like loyalty accounts, gift cards, and flights. Window 1.2 stabilized testing APIs around activity embedding and window layout info tracker. Finally, Navigation 2.7 brought the code from a company's navigation animation into Navigation Compose, meaning that all of the support for setting custom transitions that existed in animated Navhost is now directly supported in Navhost, and will soon be formally deprecating a company's navigation. There has been one episode of Android Developers Backstage posted since the last Now in Android. In episode 197, StudioBot, Tor, Oman, and Chet talk with Siva and Sandhya from the Android Studio team about the just-launched StudioBot, the AI-powered assistant that enables conversational queries within Android Studio to help with coding, commenting, confusion, or if you just need a friend. Speaking of confusion, we've now posted a video of this podcast as well, so you can choose to watch people talking into microphones or just listen to them. In articles, we covered how WPS uses MLKit to seamlessly translate documents into 43 languages, using dynamic delivery to download MLKit's translation module on demand, reducing the initial download size. Louie blogged about how to listen to user interactions in Jetpack Compose and create reusable visual indications that can be applied across your application. Chris demystified view composition strategy, covering what view composition strategy is, why it's needed, and how you can pick the right strategy for your use case to avoid state loss. Ben covered how Turo reduced the startup time of their app by 77% using Android's best tools, resources, and practices. The post details how Turo used the app startup library to initialize multiple components during launch, paralyzed and deferred their network request, applied baseline profiles, and more. The Google Play team released two videos detailing common accessibility issues around content labels and color contrast and how pre-launch reports, or PLR, can help identify them in your app. The Google Pay team did a live stream where they walked through an integration tutorial, answering questions from the audience, and a recording is available for you to watch. We had a bunch of great drops from the Google for Games Developer Summit. Around Google Play games on PC, we covered the certification process and common changes needed to bring your game to the PC platform. We talked about the business of cross-platform games with an industry panel, and ContoS talked about how and why they brought Summoner's War Chronicles to the platform. We also covered how ADPF, the Android Dynamic Performance Framework, helps you respond to and influence runtime performance in your games on Android, highlighting how to use this technology with the APIs or from within Unity. We talked OpenGL ES versus Vulkan, including an overview of the graphics APIs, their respective benefits, and how to decide which API or APIs to use in your game. Finally, we covered Google Play's monetization tools, how to design your monetization strategy, and best practices around hybrid monetization. That's it for this week with top mad things, game development, interaction source, view composition and navigation animation in Jetpack Compose, designing for Wear OS, pre-launch reports, studio bot, compose for TV, and more. Be sure to subscribe, share, stay safe, and check back soon for the next update from the Android developer universe. <laughs>